Hey guys, Sonny Bryson here, and this right here is Bitcoin. And right now, I'm up around 200%, and this right here is cash. And right now, I'm down around 2-3% because of inflation. However, though, I am a big investor in just like normal stocks, index funds, and ETFs, and all that good stuff, okay? However, though, for this video, the whole point is telling me, how do I start an ATM business around Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And by the way, I made a video not too long ago breaking down exactly how to start a normal ATM business with cash that got somewhere around 1.2 million views, okay? However, in this video, I'm gonna go straight into the details. How much is it going to cost? How do you open up? How are the laws, state and federal wise? And for example, last thing, is it going to be a good idea? Can you actually make money? Is it actually worth it? In this video, I'm going to break everything down. Now, if you guys are new here, I post videos every single day. So make sure to also subscribe and hit the bell to so get notified. And on top of that, also destroy the like button. I know you don't have to be a billionaire or a millionaire or a hundred thousand error to start this business whatsoever, so don't worry about that. Now, the very first thing, guys, is pretty obvious to say the least that basically, ATM machines are usually going to be more expensive than cash machines. Why? Because by the way, right now, it's more rare. Less people have actually created it, so there's more demand for it. People actually want it now. There are a few reasons why it is, okay? However, though, just to show you the big difference in price, this right here is eBay. On eBay, I can find an ATM between 1700 to 1500 and that is, my friends, a cash ATM. The standard ATMs out there. And by the way, did you guys know that ATM stands for Automatic Teller Machine? Did you know that? If you did, comment down below. If you didn't, let me know, okay? I wanna know, okay? However, though, they're pretty cheap. You have eBay, you have Craigslist, same thing. You can find one for around like, what is it, like $1,200, $1,400. But again, they're not that expensive whatsoever, okay? That's the cool That's the cool thing, right? However, though, look here. Facebook, same thing. $1,600, not that expensive whatsoever, $2,000. Or, for example, here is where things are going to change. If you want to go ahead and buy an ATM machine, understand that the Bitcoin ones are very expensive and they're not <laughs> they're not that cheap okay so for example this right here is a website called coin ATM radar and it shows me exactly what the current prices are for ATMs and I'm guessing that they're also affiliated so they do get money when you actually buy however look at this here this ATM just to buy crypto supports for example Bitcoin Litecoin ethereum also Bitcoin cash okay this costs around forty five hundred dollars but guess what it does have free shipping all right it is still expensive don't get me wrong on top of that this one right here is sixty eight hundred dollars and it has for example a little thermal printer or whatever you want to call it on top of that also the Satoshi 2 this one here costs around eight thousand. $900 to buy crypto and also sell crypto. And the Royce Royce of crypto ATM machines, like the one you see at your bank, like the big cash ATM machines over at the bank, for example, like Chase, those big ones. Well, this right here costs around $14,500. Again, this stuff is not cheap, okay? But buying the ATM is going to be the easiest part because basically, all you need is cash and you go out there and you buy it and boom, before you know it, now you got it. But there's also, for example, other ones, for example, 3,200, but again, none of them are below $3,000 currently. None of them are below $3,000. And even used ones, for example, on this website, they go for quite a pretty penny, okay? That's the point here. It is going to cost some money to go ahead and buy an ATM when it comes to being like Bitcoin supported and all that stuff, okay? Or just crypto supportive as a whole. And by the way, a big thing is basically that if I want to go to your ATM machine, well, I want to make sure it's not just, for example, Bitcoin, but other coins. And that's also going to be expensive. So on top of buying the ATM, you also need to know exactly what the regulations are, for example, federal-wise and state-wise. Now, by the time you watch this video right here, the laws might change. So the point is, you want to do your own independent research, find out, hey, am I allowed to put an ATM in my area? What are the state rules? And also, what are the federal rules? You gotta find it out, make sure everything is solid. On top of that, I'm guessing somewhere around, you need an LLC, right? 
you need all those documents, but it's not really gonna cost that much money. It depends on where you live. New York, it might be somewhere around like $1,000 to form everything, but in other states it might be around $500. Now the company I use to form LLCs and everything else you need is going to be called LegalZoom. LegalZoom is a business I use. They're great, link down below. And it's a very easy way to just basically get everything in order as far as protecting yourself with an LLC and everything that you actually need. However though, Tommy, all right, so I can buy an ATM. Relations are good. I also need money to fund it. By the way, it's not gonna be cheap, okay? It might be like 5,000, 10,000, you can start small, but usually you're going to require some money to actually buy the currency that you actually wanna go ahead and sell for cash or allow them to go ahead and actually buy, okay? That's all concept, you have to own those things. However, all right, but how does it really work? Well, in reality, this is less of an ATM automatic teller machine because in reality, it's not like, hey, I go in, I put my card in, I get my cash out, right? That's just me getting my money out. However, this is more like an exchange because basically you're trading in cash for either Bitcoin or Bitcoin for cash, okay? You're exchanging something. Now, the cool thing is, Tommy, how do I make money here? The answer is, well, you get commission. Now, the average commission, whenever you're going to buy Bitcoin at a Bitcoin machine, is going to be, for example, around 8.4%. And when I say Bitcoin, I don't just mean Bitcoin, I mean Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, or whatever coins are actually offered at that ATM. That's what I mean. However, the big idea is you make 8.4% every time someone actually buys Bitcoin. So for example, if you have an average transaction of $10,000 per month, okay? Let's just say that, $10,000 per month, that's your foot traffic, everything there. Multiply it by 0.084%, you're gonna make around $840 per machine. Let's say, for example, you have 10 locations, multiply by 10, that's $8,000 every single month. A lot of money, but remember, 10 machines, multiply by this way, for example, $4,000, that might be, for example, a $40,000 initial investment. It is expensive to do. And on top of that, whenever you're going to sell the Bitcoin to trade it for cash is less. You make around like 5% on that. Now, the thing is that basically guys, okay, who's going out there and buying Bitcoin from an ATM machine? Or for example, who's trading my Bitcoin for cash? Usually it's not the average person because the average person knows for a fact, hey, I can use Robinhood or Coinbase or any platform out there, even SoFi, to basically buy and sell Bitcoin and then transfer it over to my bank in like a few days or right then and there, for example, with Robinhood. It's not really that hard to actually do. So to say, hey, I'm gonna go to you, to you to buy Bitcoin or to basically sell my Bitcoin to get charged so much money is actually very unlikely, okay? So foot traffic might actually slow down. But also a big thing is basically, the reason you're able to make so much money is because right now, basically, there are not that many machines. Overall, I think like maybe like less than like 5,000 machines in America as a whole, most likely. But the idea is you have <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of normal ATM machines. Now, if Bitcoin, crypto, I mean, becomes like this massive thing, oh my gosh, it's the next currency, oh my gosh, everyone's gonna use it, including your grandma. The idea is, well, when you have a lot of ATMs everywhere, a lot of competition, their prices are usually going to drop. It's just the way business actually works and demand supply actually works. So although right now, you might make that much money, it's very unlikely in the future, you'll actually be able to make that much money overall. So I go to your Bitcoin machine, I say, hey, I wanna go ahead, scan my wallet, use my debit card or cash, I wanna go ahead and buy some Bitcoin, I can do it right there. If I wanna say, hey, here's my wallet, I wanna sell this Bitcoin, I wanna get this money back, boom, I can actually do that. Now, a big question that I wanna answer here before I say if I, don't, if I would recommend this or not, the answer is tell me, how do taxes work on this stuff? Well, you gotta talk to a CPA about this because in reality, if you have a Bitcoin ATM machine and you bought Bitcoin in order to actually do the whole exchange, but then for example, when people actually exchange, you're actually making a profit in a way sometimes. The answer is how does that work, for example, tax-wise? As a consumer, for example, if I'm gonna use your ATM, I know for a fact, whenever I actually sell my Bitcoin or my crypto, and actually sold it for a profit, the answer is that is capital gains tax. Now, if it's not over $20,000 or $10,000, it doesn't get reported, but if it doesn't get reported, how do I pay taxes on it? 
How is it actually searched up? How do they know if it's not like an, by the way, some ATMs don't require IDs and that's a big problem with it. But in reality, that's another issue for the IRS to figure out, not for me or you to actually figure out, okay? So I'm not recommending that you avoid taxes in any form or shape or form, okay? But the answer is, it's just an interesting question I was actually just having in my head and how does it actually work, for example, tax-wise. If you have, for example, your ID, everything is 100% legit, then in reality, it's not a problem as far as tax wise. Basically, it can be tracked, okay? However though, tell me, do you recommend this business? Would you go out there and start a full-blown ATM business? Well, in reality, A, it is going to cost more money starting an ATM business with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency than it would, for example, with regular cash. However though, today, 2021, we have a phone, okay? So in reality, picture a world where Bitcoin becomes the future, okay? What are the odds that you're going to forget your phone and not be able to just go ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and just pay with my phone with the Bitcoin or whatever currency it is that's actually in there. That's the whole idea. So again, ATMs are going to be a convenience factor. Back in the days, people didn't really have that many, like, you know, like um, where you had like a lot of businesses saying like no to debit cards and credit cards. That was like a big thing. But today, where everyone is using Squarespace and every other payment form, in reality, it's not really that popular. So even for example, like the official ATMs are becoming like, obsolete in a way. In 10 years, will they be here? The answer is we don't know. So usually what you might wanna do is say, hey, I'll put up a few standard normal cash ATMs, maybe five in great locations, potentially sell it. Same thing with the Bitcoin ones, if it does become something, but there is a big risk that if it does not become anything, all that money is gone also down the drain. Also, another question is, Tommy, what locations do I put these ATMs in, whether it's cash ones or Bitcoin ones? Well, you wanna put them in high traffic locations, but you also, for Bitcoin machines, have to study the demographic because you have to know who's actually going to use this. If you put this, for example, <laughs> in, for, in like an old area, like an old population, are they gonna use it? Most likely no, okay? So it has to be like, you know, like a decent demographic that's actually going to be using this Bitcoin thing, actually making it work and so on. Now, this might be, for example, restaurant, cafes, mom and pop shops, or for example, businesses that carry a lot of cash and only take cash. For example, like barbershops and salons, although today they're starting to take more debit cards and credit cards and all that stuff. So it's basically high traffic areas that are actually going to use this actual stuff, especially for example, gentlemen clubs, like, you know, with the polls and stuff like that, because people actually go there, they need cash, and they charge you a lot of money, by the way. Haven't been there, but I've been told they charge a lot of money, okay? I'm just clarifying that, because as you guys know, I have a fiance, so I don't want to get in trouble. But that's the whole concept, guys, okay? So, Tommy, what do you start this, you know? The answer is no. You know, it takes a lot of money to start it up. Well, not a lot, maybe like 4,000, 5,000. It does take some money. However, it is like due to fluctuations that people aren't interested anymore. You might not make any money whatsoever. And foot traffic is gonna be based on, hey, is the market up or is it down? People wanna buy, or people don't wanna buy. That's the whole thing. Right now is not really a convenience thing because in reality, people are going there to buy or to basically exchange. But it's not because basically everywhere in the world, they're actually accepting crypto as a form of payment. And by the way, you might say, Tommy, well, in the future, that might happen, but in the future also, people have cell phones and debit cards or whatever it is to actually pay, you know? That's the big thing. We're moving towards a cashless society, most likely. Now, even today, for example, the biggest ATM networks like Allpoint, which by the way, you might say, well, Tommy, because all banks are going, for example, no more like brick and mortar places where you don't have to go there to actually have like a teller, all that stuff, ATMs gonna be like a big, a big thing. However, though, when you have companies like SoFi, they're using big, big networks of ATMs. Now, for example, like the little ones here and there, usually, right? They have like the all point network, it has over 50,000 or 35,000 ATMs, okay? And now, they're able to accept deposits and also, for example, take money out. So it's gonna change the game. My point is, it's going to get more competitive and the business is going to get slimmer and slimmer and slimmer, but that's just my opinion. If you think differently, comment down below, let me know. But me personally, again, I would not get into the whole ATM um, Bitcoin situation. It's probably not going to be a good idea if it doesn't go your way. And right now, it's just not accepted as a payment form overall. But Tommy, this is a time where you wanna get in because basically, it's not accepted, so this is like the gold mine era. Well, yeah, could be, but again, I'm not betting on it. And if you are gonna do this, understand the risks 
and most likely don't put all your money into this basket. It's just what I would do. So overall, to summarize here, you can buy an ATM, $4,000 online, understand regulations in your state and also the federal laws. And lastly, get an LLC, make sure everything's taken care of and understand the location you're going to put it in. It's the most important factor. If you put it in a dead location, it's not really gonna do anything. And by the way, I saw right here, this great, great guy right here over on, on this website, it's called Quirro. He says basically, well, my ATM business can range from, for example, $100 all the way up to $1,000. But the locations will be very important. The fees are very important. But again, customers are going to compare. Okay, so in reality, if I know you charge a lot, I just won't go there. So it's all based on competition. If it does become a massive thing, most likely, fees are gonna get lower and lower and lower and lower. And by the way, the more crypto that you actually, you know, like offer, like, you know, different currencies and so on, the more money potentially you can actually make, but also the more risk you can potentially even take. And now, for example, a one-way ATM is cool, but a two-way ATM is even better because two-way ATMs you take. I can buy, but I can also sell. But again, those are very expensive. And he says, basically, if you want to test it out, you can use this thing called like Toki. I don't know about that stuff, so be careful with that stuff. However, though, that's the whole concept and that's the whole idea. Be careful with this game. Me personally, I wouldn't do it, okay? Plus, ATMs are usually going to be a dime business. However, you could get some extra money right now, then sell it, and then have somebody else deal with it, okay, guys? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. Any questions, comment down below, let me know. On top of also, if you wanna call me and talk to me one-on-one -on -one directly, join me on my third channel, Ask Me Bryson, where I take calls from Monday to Friday, but calls are being limited, although calls are free. So you'll call today, link down below, subscribe over to that channel. If you want to DM me, DM me right here at Tommy Bryson on Instagram. And lastly, before I go, here's another video right here on how to start a normal ATM business. And here's my face right here. Subscribe to the channel right now. See you guys tomorrow. And as always, peace.